Introducing DSG's 5MT Podcast, where we draw inspiration from the annual three-minute thesis for PhD candidates, challenging them to explain their research in three minutes or less. In each episode, we'll dive into a marketing topic, giving you the essentials without the time commitment. Tune in for quick, valuable marketing insights on the 5MT Podcast by your DSG marketing team. Hey, Paige, how you doing? I'm good. Okay. Always good. Always good to be here. The most random things on my mind today, but... Okay. Okay. Ready. And I had <laughs> recently took a trip to the Home Depot, and I had to get some cleaning supplies because, um, you know, houses get dirty and children eat lollipops and stuff, and they get fingerprints everywhere. It's nasty, but um, I just realized how much I appreciate Windex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Windex. It's so good. Mm -hmm. yep. Is there a cleaning product that you just love and can't live without? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I Any glass cleaner is so good, but Windex is the best because yeah. it's the most chemically. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most ammonia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can smell that ammonia. Yes. Um, so I just... Um, this is just, I, I'm always looking at things to make my life easier. Always, always, always. And um, I went to Target and I found a huge, and the, the only reason why I bought them was because of the size, but they're these huge cleaning wipes and they're like Ooh. maybe the size of my youngest daughter. That's wonderful. Um, they're called, uh, they're called like Omega wipes. Sen yeah. Centavia or something. <laughs> but they're like cl Clorox wipes, really. But like yeah. they're called like Centavia. Like, so the reason why they're called that is because they, they smell really, really strong <laughs> of a delicious lavender scent. Oh. And I love the smell of lavender. Some people cool. don't, but I, I do. So instead of um, taking like 401 and spraying our like fake wood table now <laughs> i use the at the end of the night um when the girls are in bed i use the the giant the giant thing of wipes and i wipe down the table i wipe down the kitchen tops and then everything smells really good so, i don't know if it's, it's i mean like i could probably mind and clean yeah i could probably live without it to tell you the truth but it just it makes my life it's a change, little bit easier change your life in a positive way yeah yeah that Not question passionate. was sent right to Paige instead of sports, and she was thrilled. Oh, <laughs> every time we have a sports rush, <laughs> but when we talk about cleaning, I'm like, yay! <laughs> oh my this god, this is going I, in a traditional Like, if we talk about I'm, minimal I'm a... <laughs> minimum lifestyle, I, I'm all for it. If we could have two hours just talking about how to get rid of stuff, I'd be, I'd be all in. I think we can think about an episode like that, Jack. Yeah, yeah. maybe from a marketing standpoint, <laughs> get rid of the crap. <laughs> uh jack you got a question for us jack today. EM. i do have a question for you guys uh when you perform a search on google or bing you can already see the impact of ai so as experts in local marketing how do you see ai affecting online listings oh that's really it's an excellent uh, that's question a I, every, I feel like we say that every time <laughs> Jack. Well, he, has, he comes question. up with great questions. I know. I know. We're so to lucky everybody. to have you. <laughs> okay. So I think we should first kind of set the stage on. I, I mean, I have everyone has opinions on AI, right? Yep. Either it's going to be our doom and impact human ability to create, which you, that could be your camp. But on the other side of things, you could also think about it as this is a really helpful tool to make room and time for things that really count that helps with your creativity. Yeah. Right. So um, with these AI powered search engines, I think the very first step as a marketer, the very first jumping off point to utilizing the power and getting your brand set up is through listings management. Um, as we know, and we've talked about, is listing management is really what has been the cornerstone of off-site search engine optimization. And a lot of times, or what I've heard <laughs> um, in our market is that SEO, quote unquote, is dead. To me, SEO strategy is a bit nebulous. 
And SEO might be dead, but the whole strategy behind it of making your brand the best that it can be yeah. is still there. And that is what ultimately these AI search engines are looking for yeah. in your brand. And list the listing management technology is part of that. Yeah, no, that's a good call. It's, it, it always goes back to tell the story of your, your business, tell the story of your brand. And if you do that effectively and, uh, you know, and tell the search engine about that, the, by including the right data and organizing the right way, that's going to help. Yeah. Right. That's always going to help. Yeah. That's just being clear. <clears throat> so I've been talking to more seasoned marketers. And when I say seasoned marketers, like those that have even advertised in print yellow pages, right? Yeah. And they're still in marketing and they've made the transition into digital and, and all of that. And I asked them, what has that journey, what was that journey like? And they're like, uh, pretty much same shiz different day <laughs> you know um which i can appreciate and that's and that's yeah. the the way that folks consume is very different but the best practices still ring true right it's always the message right? yeah what are so, you trying to say we know that so let's look at this simply we know these ai powered search engines prioritize business that provides reliable information so how can you easily provide these platforms the most reliable information? It's kind of doing that checklist of offsite SEO. And so that's why I think listing management needs to be part of any um, media plan. Yeah. Um, and I and by the way, I do talk about this in um, uh, a company called Street Fight. It's a, a, a online magazine that goes into, and this is specifically for multi-location, but I think you'd get a lot out of it even if you're a small business owner. Um, it's gonna be debuting, the title is First Steps in Getting Your Business in AI-Powered Search Results. And it goes through sort of a step-by-step -step, uh, considerations in obtaining list listing management technology and what to do with it in order to support your brand getting recognized by these engines. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and Street Bites a great resource, as Paige mentioned, for you know anybody who's trying to, to learn more about marketing technology doesn't necessarily to your point, have to be about multi-location. Although if you are a multi-location marketer, there's some really, really good stuff in there and rich. And um, please do check out Paige's article. I think it's very informative, really, really well done. Captures a lot of information about this space. Um, Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I read it, I swear. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, sure you have. <laughs> so um, one of the things I want to talk about specifically, Jack, to your question was, how is AI kind of crept into this world of online listing management? How does it support it? How does it drive uh, some of the information that's out there? Uh, and one of the things I we've we've talked about before, and it's kind of on the tip of everybody's tongue, is that AI is kind of the ultimate um efficiency tool or at least it can be looked at that way right where you have things that you need to do you can use ai to either jumpstart your creativity like Paige mentioned to jump into um just getting a lot of work done we do a lot with call listening analysis and we're building models to say hey okay can you do this a lot quicker so when it comes to online listings most of the companies that provide online listing services or you know data uh, aggregators are not only making it easier for you to put your information in, whether that's just scraping the information off of your website, but then also giving you prompted suggestions. You can have a conversation with that technology, whether it's you know traditional online listings or reviews that are associated with that listing, it can get you way out ahead of where you had been if you just had to go and kind of analyze that, think about it yourself. It's giving you best practices, tips. So as we see this evolution, each of these technologies is kind of in a race to, to get the best and most efficient way to get information out of you, the client, um, and then get it to your clients, right? So all of these are going to be designed for that. And, um, you know, our, our advice is obviously always take advantage of that, you know, and on the flip side of that coin, it, when you're taking advantage of it, look at it with a fine tooth comb, right? That your job is become editor, not writer. Um, in a lot of senses, I think somebody mentioned that in a, a conference I was, I thought it was a great analogy. You are now, you know, in the group of editors, um, 
or you can be. So think of it that way, right? Utilize it and then be more stringent about the content you're putting out there. It allows you another moment to think, is this right? Is this the right thing I should be saying to my audience? Thank you so much for tuning in to DSG's 5MT podcast. I'd love to thank my co-host, Mike Gatos. Truly my pleasure. And I would like to give a big thank you to our producer, Jack Marinello. If you enjoyed this podcast, like and subscribe to 5MT. Have a question? Leave a comment. Tune in next time. Happy Happy marketing. marketing.